traditional role for a mentor in one's career, but there are limitations. The traditional role is that you have one mentor and you're dependent upon that person to advise you on all aspects of your career. In some cases, a mentor is chosen for a mentee with no consideration of that compatibility. Some of the limitations of the traditional mentor model are indicated here. Having only one mentor means that you only hear one approach and not a diversity of these approaches. If a mentor gives bad advice, you may have no way of knowing that. Bad advice can include advice on future careers, what responsibilities to take on or not, etc. One perspective is what you will receive. It is for these reasons that it is important to have several people who can advise you. We have discussed earlier the various roles that multiple mentors can play in advising on your career and personal life. It has been implied that you will meet with these individuals in person, but in some cases it is fine to do this through email or to even meet these people at various seminars and programs. They might be helpful to you once or many times. I think today it's unlikely that anybody will, no matter whether it's translational or health services research outcomes, no matter what. There are special needs that um, young faculty and fellows and trainees have that make it very difficult for a single person to serve them. Most of us concept that we believe that there should be mentorship teams um, we believe that particularly for women, there are issues in, the, in, in their daily life. Many of them have children. And so most of us who have children as men don't really have a real appreciation for juggling a family and a career because it's very important and not necessarily essential, but it's very important, I think, for women uh, trainees to have um, some mentors that are women, as well as having um, uh, an academic mentor who may be there, who work, they work in the lab or work in, the, in clinical research, who may or may not be a woman. But I think it's helpful to have that balance. Trainees need to know what to do in the case that their advisor or mentor abuses their power. Examples could include unreasonable expectations on work hours, not giving appropriate credit in publications, unwilling to write letters of recommendation, etc. It is recommended that once there is such an incident, but as early as possible, that the trainee talk to their advisor in a non-confrontational manner. If the issue is not resolved, then there are various others within the institution that a trainee can talk to. There are members of the student's thesis committee, the chair of their department, the associate dean for research and graduate studies in their college, the dean of their college, or the dean of the graduate school. It is suggested to start with those closer to the, at the department level. But no matter what, the trainee needs to know that they feel that they are in a safe environment. At some point, we all become mentors. To be a good mentor, you need to be a good listener. A good mentor should also follow through on what they say that they will do for their mentee. For example, if the mentor says that they will edit a manuscript, they should do so in a timely manner. And they should do so in a thorough and a constructive manner. No matter what, a mentor should be supportive. Because not all people are created equal in terms of their mentoring ability. Some people are probably natural mentors. They interact very well with uh, with trainees and not so good. They can you can be a you can be an outstanding scientist and you can be a lousy mentor. Um, it, mentoring requires that you have the best interest of your mentee in mind. That you, you want to help them in any way possible. That you have some you have availability to help them. You recognize your own limitations about what you can do to mentor them. You may be multiple mentors that are helping them in their, their uh, career development. 
um, and um, you accept philosophically whatever they think they want to do because it's their life, it's not yours. And that is, if they do things that disappoint you, you can say you're disappointed, but it's their life. They have to do what they're happy doing. And so for me, with the people that I meet, and that they're pursuing what they want to do with themselves, not pursuing what I want them to do for themselves. Well, I think that in medicine, mentorship has always been a traditional uh, way that, that you had, in fact, all of these levels of mentorship all the way down to sort of the medical student was being mentored by the intern who's being mentored by the resident, who's being mentored by the attending, who's being mentored by the chair or something. And, and so you have these sort of chains of, of mentorship in, in the ideal world. Now, I think uh, some philosophy, but a really a good mentor is watching, is letting the person go as far as they can go, stepping in when necessary. Uh, redirecting, informing, providing information uh, f for that, that individual, but also letting them grow. I mean, part of mentorship is really fostering uh, a doctor who thinks for himself, who can read the literature, who cares about his patients, who puts that extra, who goes that extra mile, and that's something that you have to both model yourself and to sort of foster in the mentorship process. A successful mentee-mentor relationship does not just happen. It requires work on both sides. A mentee needs to be clear what they want from the mentor and that they need to be respectful of the mentor's time. For example, a mentee may ask a potential mentor if they can provide guidance on possible alternative careers. From the get-go, the potential mentor will know whether they can address those issues and whether they can provide the appropriate most importantly, it should be recognized that mentoring is a rewarding part of someone's career and that both the mentor and the mentee get something out of that relationship. And finally, it is important that you be your own advocate for your career. You cannot wait for people to help you. You need to take control, be proactive, and ask for help. There are mentors out there for you. You just need to work to find them. So if there were work weekly meetings, he wouldn't have disappeared. Probably so. But you know how weekly meetings sometimes get canceled. You, you, you travel. You know the mentor is you know a famous person, busy, travels, whatever. If if the expectation is a weekly meeting and it starts off that way, then you're you know more likely to continue that way. You know these mentees are smart people. They you know probably went through high school and college getting you know mostly A's, maybe. A, UBs. They're not used to rejection, if you want to call this rejection, getting a, a non-fundable score on their grant. And maybe you needed to warn this person up front that if you become a clinical researcher, you need to get used to this, that there are a lot of ups and downs, right? Good days when your paper gets accepted or your abstract gets accepted, bad days when it's been rejected by the fourth journal. This person may not have been expecting that or or even if they were sort of expecting that, they, did, they didn't, you know, after a while they said, this isn't for me. But maybe that conversation never took place up front and should have. Well, what happened here, because you want to know, is this person actually did leave academics, got a good job with like a health in sort of health management in the same city. And I think at the end it was probably for the best, but you know, you just don't like to see these things happening. Now having said that, every person you deal with isn't gonna turn into a success story. And you know, you you as a mentor anticipate from time to time people not succeeding, but still it's not a good feeling. Appropriate advice. Most importantly, 
it should be recognized that mentoring is a rewarding part of someone's career and that both the mentor and the mentee get something out of that relationship. And finally, it is important that you be your own advocate for your career. You cannot wait for people to help you. You need to take control, be proactive, and ask for help. There are mentors out there for you. You just need to work to find them.